We test a lot of hedge units here at Cycling Weekly, so I've put together the ultimate guide that shows off our top picks across 10 different price points. And of course, I've linked all of them down in the description box below. While many of us love to pour over the details of every metric available after doing a hard training session, a lot of us cyclists like to keep it simple when it comes to data. So if it's the straightforward approach to ride tracking that you're after, then the Van Riesel BC100 will be all you need. And better still, you'll be able to get change out of a £10 note. Rather than offering a myriad of different data fields, Van Riesel's BC100 offers just five key functions. Speed, distance, time, average speed, and time of day, which really, provided you know your local roads, is all you actually need to track your riding. At just 21.6 grams, the BC100 is also the lightest computer on our list, though that doesn't include the wired connection. The lower cost does mean that the data is measured from a wired connection with your rear wheel using a magnetic system to calculate speed and distance. The downside of this, of course, is a slightly more cluttered experience and setup, as you have to route the wire as neatly as possible from the handlebars down to the chainstay. But at $9.99, we think the BC100 is still thoroughly deserving of its place on our list. If you, like me, would happily dig just a little bit deeper into your pocket to keep any more cables firmly away from your pride and joy, then you'll want to hear more about the Cati Velo Wireless. In a similar way to the BC100, the Velo Wireless forgoes the jargon of many higher-end computers in our lineup, instead focusing on getting the basics right in a budget-friendly and easy-to-use package. The Velo Wireless uses a wheel sensor system which transmits speed, time, distance and their respective average data to the head unit and we found it to be a very reliable connection through our testing. Interestingly too, despite the disparity in price, the Cati Velo Wireless returned incredibly consistent data when we compared it to much more expensive computers on the market. We were particularly impressed with its intuitive, secure mounting system and incredibly long battery life courtesy of an ever common CR2032 coin cell battery. Once again, at this price point, mapping is foregone and you won't be able to connect a power meter or any other AMP Plus device to the Cati Velo Wireless. But for reliable, simple and cable free recording on a budget, the Cati ticks all of the boxes. What if you want something just a little bit more stylish? Enter the Cati Velo Quick, a device with a very similar spec, all in a form factor that would look at home on the Apple website. Like the Velo Wireless, the Quick records data from a wireless wheel sensor, keeping life simple with just speed, distance and time data. What impressed us through our testing though was how user-friendly the device is and the impressive aesthetics which make the device look at home on any bike. Couple that with a £45 price tag and you can understand how the Cati Quick won our Editor's Choice Award for budget cycling computers a couple of years ago. When it comes to high-end cycling computers, head units with full GPS mapping capabilities it's hard not to consider the market being a bit of a two-horse race. We are, of course, talking about Wahoo and Garmin. Delve a little deeper into the space, however, and you will realize there are a number of brands offering very similar products at a much more modest price point. The Brighton Rider 420 packs a total of 77 different functions into its £135 price tag, all of which can be accessed both through the device itself or through the Brighton app. Thanks to full Bluetooth and AMP Plus connectivity, you can also connect to power meters, heart rate monitors, and Brighton also offers turn-by-turn -turn navigation too. Tested by our news editor, the Brighton impressed us with its reliable data capture and fairly straightforward route functionality, though there was one gripe, the user interface, both on the device and in the app. 
It just doesn't quite compare to the Brighton's more expensive counterparts. It's slightly clunkier to use and will require a little bit more patience to set up. But once you're happy with your data fields, you are good to go. So it doesn't quite go toe to toe with the most expensive computers on the market but it does share pretty much the same features as a Wahoo Element Bolt, all at a much lower price point. In fact, with the Brighton Rider 420 being a slightly older unit, a little shopping around can see you pick up this head unit for around £100. If a small form factor, bulletproof reliability and a great battery life are all things that you value, then look no further than the Garmin Edge 130. I have described it as the easiest Garmin to live with and a bit of a do-it-all powerhouse. The Edge 130 is a platform that will likely cater for 90% of riders. Set up for the 130 is beautifully simple. You can set up the device from the unit itself or by connecting your phone and then you can easily link the device to popular third-party apps such as Strava or Kamut. Visuals are handled by a 1.8 inch display which may sound small but its clarity and strong backlight make it easy to view in all angles. The only thing that the 130 does struggle with is mapping. Though the Edge 130 does offer full mapping capabilities, the smaller display does make navigating new lanes a little bit more of a challenge than some of our higher end head units. But again, for almost everyone at a competitive price, the Edge 130 is perfect. If mapping is at the top of your priorities though, then Garmin's Edge Explore 2 might just be a better option. It's a little more expensive, retailing at around £250, but a quick hunt around the web can easily see you pick up this head unit for around £200. The Edge Explore 2 features a crisp 3-inch touchscreen display, which is the third biggest on our list, and crucially, it's a colour display. As with most Garmin's today, setup is actually pretty simple and accessible either through the device or through the Garmin Connect app. And you can easily import root files as a number of different file types and from different third-party apps. The Edge Explore 2 is Cycling Weekly's best cycling computer for navigation for good reason. When we tested the device last year, we found mapping to be pretty much foolproof right from the get-go. We also lay particular praise on how quickly the Garmin connects to satellites. Now, this may seem small, but waiting at the start of your ride for your computer to fully wake up can actually be a little bit irritating. The Edge Explore 2 also includes a full 16 gigabytes of storage, meaning you can easily store a year's supply of routes and rides. For a very long time, the Wahoo Element Bolt was considered one of the best cycling computers for racers. The small form factor, great usability and aero optimizations made it a strong choice for those looking for a performance-based head unit, though it did have some issues with its display and durability. The V2 though totally addresses those issues, helping it achieve 4.5 stars when we tested it just over 12 months ago. Among the improvements is an all new 64 color display. Now, this won't be good enough to watch films on, but the Wahoo software does a stellar job of using these colors very wisely, whether it's displaying power zones or just different road types. The Bolt V2 also boasts a whole host of different smart features, including the ability to build structured workouts, have multi-sport handover, Strava Live segments, and smart notifications from apps such as WhatsApp, which we found to be particularly useful. As far as battery life is concerned, we found the 15-hour claimed runtime to be pretty accurate, and with a full charge taking less than two hours, thanks to a USB-C connector, there's little chance of you running out of battery battery mid-ride. At £249.99, we think the Wahoo Element Bolt V2 is seriously good value thanks to brilliant functionality and a user interface that is simply a pleasure to use. From one Wahoo to another, the Element Roam V2 shares a lot of the same design infrastructure as the Element Bolt V2, just in a slightly larger form factor aimed at better mapping and runtime. 
In place of the 2.2 inch panel is a larger 2.7 inch 64 color panel. Like the Element Bolt V2, the new Rome forgoes a touchscreen, instead using an array of three main buttons on the front of the device and a power button on the side. Joe, who has been testing the Rome, said he actually prefers the button system to touchscreen systems on test, simply because of the simplicity, particularly in the ever common UK rain. Battery life has also been on point in our testing too, with the Rome retrieving near the claimed 17 hour battery life. Having used both the Rome and the Bolt, we think for most people, the Bolt will be just fine. But if your riding consists of longer days in the saddle and more multi-day riding where mapping is key, the Rome is a very strong choice. Released back in March of this year, Hammerhead's Carew is the newest head unit on our list, but that hasn't stopped us putting in a serious amount of miles on it. For 2024, Hammerhead has doubled the processing power of their head unit and made a big effort to try and tackle the battery life issues of previous generations. Having been acquired by SRAM last year, Hammerhead has also been able to build in functionality for SRAM users. The Carew offers detailed status reports on all SRAM Red Axis components, as well as telling you which gear that you're in on its screen. Most interestingly though, is that the bonus buttons on the SRAM shifters can now be used remotely to control the device, something that was surprisingly useful day to day according to our tester. The result then is a fairly snappy head unit jam packed with tech and functionality and with a far better battery life compared to the previous generation, but it can't quite compete with our top choice. The Edge 1040 Solar was, until a couple of weeks ago, Garmin's range-topping cycling computer with all of the bells and whistles, including a solar panel hidden behind the 3.5-inch display to improve battery life. It has now just been eclipsed by the Garmin Edge 1050. The new model boasts an improved display, along with the usual improvements to processing power and, of course, a slightly steeper price tag. And it all looks great on paper, but it's not on this list, purely because we haven't been able to put it through a thorough test yet. What the new release does mean though, is that the Edge 1040 can be found with a bit of internet hunting for a better price. Throughout our head unit testing, the 1040 Solar has been our consistent benchmark. Garmin has paired leading processing power and a rock solid user interface and best in class battery life. The 1040 Solar sits not just as the best Garmin GPS unit, but right at the top of our buyer's guide as the best overall cycling computer that we've ever tested. Yes, the higher price tag will put some people off, but reliability, usability, and battery life are all market leading, which is why it's our pick of the list.